Hello, friends, and welcome back to Too Many Minis. My name's Ozzy. Kill Team Salvation's been out for a little while now with the Space Marine Scouts, but they're available on their own as of tomorrow, and I thought it was a good moment to do a little video show how I'm painting mine up. I'm doing them in an old-school Rogue Trader era Badab War Salamanders scheme. So the idea of my green Salamanders army is that the kind of scouts and the... Um, whatever the primary sneaky guys are called, they will all have the kind of bad ab war yellow black salamander pattern to make them a bit different and uh, not at all camouflaged unless they happen to be in a yellow and black world. But it's cool and it reminds me of being a kid. So hopefully someone finds that useful. I'll show you how I've painted them. You can apply most of the techniques to any color. I'll just show you how I've done mine. So I started with a wraith bone prime all over and stuck a and in yellow contrast over all the bits I want to be yellow and some more as a mistake next up was black legion contrast over all of the fabric parts and the guns and techie bits black legion is my favorite black paint at the moment but I have noticed some difference in opacity between different pots I want it quite opaque next up I hit all the leather parts with a rhinox hide When that's all done, I got out the uh, black metal by scale color and hit all the metallic parts that I wanted to be in that dark metal color. So I've given them steel toe caps, bits of the gun, the all specs. Next up was to ready the gold. And with my salamanders, I start with Screaming Bell, which is a very reddish, uh, bronzy color. So it's the Aquila on the chest, the kind of belt buckle, uh, the little uh, skull and Aquila on the bolter, the little shape on the side of the head. I don't know what that's called, the little earmuff. Next up is the skin on the head. I'm still not sure exactly what I'm doing with my salamanders, but what I'm currently going with is a catachan flesh to start, and then I'll wash that with Nolan oil later. Here's the big one, Avalanche Sunset. It's going over all of the yellow parts, um, only leaving the Iandan yellow contrast in the darker spots where it's pulled or where it's in the recesses, and where it's where we want it dark. So if it's pulled on the top of the pauldron, we don't want it there. We go straight over with the avalanche. But in the bottom of the pauldron, I'd generally be pulling the brush down, but not getting quite to the bottom. Agrax next, and it's going over all the gold parts. You want to go slightly over the edge on these to make them stand out from the yellow yeah you can squash a good bit on get some definition and then the same with known oil over all the dark metal parts we did earlier and then it's known oil over the flesh as we said earlier to give it the uh, crispy cooked Vulcan look Then I get out the Mournfang Brown. This is an extra stage I've added into my leather recently. Let's go from Rhinox Hide first to Mournfang Brown second. And it's just a nice warm leather color. And you see, I'm just putting it in, trying to do the raised areas, the rubbed areas at the edges. Quite a lot of it gets covered with the Mournfang. Then it's scrag brown, and this goes in just on the scuffed edges, basically. It's like that kind of rubbed raw leather. So quite sparing of this. And then it's a new one for me. It's buff from Model Color, Vallejo Model Color. Um, I'm using this to replace a shabti bone, which is just too porridgey and bad in the pot for me to keep using. Um, sorry, Games Workshop, but it's no. 
Um, like a lot of the light colors, they just get too porridgey and uh, it's too inconvenient. So I've got buff, which is a little bit yellower, a little bit warmer, but I'm only using it for little touches here. This is really like white scraped leather, corners, and just where you want to add detail. So you can see it just crisps up the edges and gives a worn leather look. And that's the leather done. Now it's onto a Retributor armor. This one's just going onto all of the gold parts that we've already done Screaming Bell and washed with Agrats. And now you're just trying to pick out the, the bits that aren't in shadow, that aren't in the recesses, and bring the shine back up on them and get them gold a bit. But you don't want to do the whole pit. You want to just do the ends, like on the ends of these feathers, because you're trying to give that gr gradation that, that metal will have, shiny metal will have. When that's done, we're doing much the same thing with heavy metal, another scale color metallic. I'm getting really into them. I've only got two so far, but I'm going to get more. Then we're doing much the same thing, adding silver highlights to our existing dark metal. Caps of the toes. Top edges of things. The next step is to highlight the yellow. Now, I didn't want to go up to uh, Flash Kit's yellow. It's not, it's too bright for this. So I got the Avalanche Sunset and added in Vallejo Light Yellow, which is my go-to highlighting color for yellow these days. And get a, a nice mix of them too. And then again, it's about hitting the top layers of things, getting the light coming from above. You see on this knee pad. And then smoothing it down into the layer, feathering it down into the layer below. You see on here. Proper coverage at the top. And then as your brush is running out a bit at the bottom of the stroke, you bring it down. Might even be two coats needed for some of this. Once I got a yellow I was happy with, it was on to the white grey. It could be also in grey, I've just replaced it with this white grey. And here I'm just hitting, rubbing most of the paint off the brush and using the side of the brush to catch the sides of this piping. What's the word for this kind of piping? Uh, I don't know but it definitely likes to be painted with the side of the brush. Um, again, doing a kind of dry brush on the folds of the cloth, on the high edges of the hands. I don't like highlighting black. A light gray, almost white highlight on the extremities will, will do for me. And again, the Dawnstone, a, bit, a little bit darker, and doing the same thing with the edges of the gun casing. The uh, the white and grey look too white. I'm doing a little bit of shading on the yellow again with iron and yellow contrast, just to give some more depth there in some areas that I wanted to be a bit darker. If you do this right the first time, you won't need to go back and do these bits. Uh, it's a bit of mournfang now, I think, for the uh, highlights on this flesh. A bit on his head. So it's like brows, nose, nostrils, cheeks, on top of the head. I'm still not convinced with my uh, salamander flesh. Black Legion contrast. It's the more opaque one. And this is what we're going to use to do the main thing the lines. So you get not the thinnest brush. And the way that the, the the reason why I'm using the contrast is because it's quite opaque, but it's it's really smooth, so it's really good for painting lines like this. If you use a regular paint, it's going to kind of run out on your brush and be globier at one end. This gives you a chance to get really smooth lines, and then just kind of picking. I was copying the old Rogue Trader era artwork for this, just picking these lines. 
some of them snaking off each other some of them just individual lines this was the fun bit for sure this is what's going to really make this unit look the part And I was just picking as many places where I thought I could get away with a bit of this pattern. There's obviously less spots on a scout armor than there are on a full space marine. But I think there's enough. If you get it onto all the little bits around the power pack and that kind of thing, you, you, you get enough. Last little gold highlight. With the polished gold from Game Color, uh, you don't need this, but I, I quite like it for the, the just little dots, little high points. Especially since I'm going to matte varnish it afterwards, it's going to bring it down a bit. Nice and shiny. I cut out one of the round scout decals. They're a bit boring, those round scout things, so I thought I'd. Uh, Add something to it that's micro set going on first dip the decal in the water and then leave it for 30 seconds a minute so it's moving let's check it's moving it is moving so an old brush pushing it on move it into place I like using something that isn't a brush for that then you get the micro sole and again with an old brush once it's in place and it's not too wet, we're just adding some of that and that's going to make it the decal conform to the curvature of the pauldron. Um, let that dry. It might need a second coat of it once it's dried. You see there it's still rough, but in a bit it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of shrink and fit nicely. It's a bit of Agrax just to stick in some cavities that I didn't think were dark enough. Again, this is a step that if you do earlier, you're not going to need to do it now. But I just wanted to add some more depth. Caliban green for the Auspex screen. I'm not a master at doing these screens. I think that's Warboss screen there, just to give a a bit of a light to the screen, leaving the Caliban in the edges. And then Moot Green, which I was going to try and do some smart smart um, design, but I just went for little crosses, like the little crosses turning up on his auspex. I don't know what auspex it's do. It's pretend technology. I think this will do. Excuse the massively blurredness of it. I've not yet mastered the art of uh, keeping it in focus while painting. And uh, when I get a bigger camera fix, where I can fix the focus, that would be neat. You can see there, it looks like there's something on the screen. That's about as good as it's getting on that tiny screen for me. Now it's corn red in the eyes within the glowing salamander eyes there's quite a big line horizontal line for the corn red i'm using model color orange red to do a sort of circle in the middle kind of catching the just the eyeball on the model rather than the whole eye socket which is what the corn red is and then a tiny dot with this point to this brush tiny dot of flash gets yellow in the very center of the eye as the pupil. Let me see that's just giving it a glowing, glowing look. Scrag brown for a last highlight on the skin. Again, cheeks, brows, tip of the nose, bit of light gray on the teeth. And I put this Salamander's logo on top of the scalp thing. I'm with the other pauldron I'm going to leave just with the design because there's not enough space really. So again it's micro set, micro sole and uh, varnish. 
Now, in my chipping stage, dry bark. That's my go-to chip to color. And I'm catching the edges of the yellow panels and little bits of scuff and scratch around the knees, the edges of the shoulder pads. And that's because I tend towards doing overly clean models, especially for Space Marines. So I'm not going to dirty it up massively, but I will put these scratched off bits. And you see they build up across the whole model. And then I get light yellow. And so whatever your color you're doing this, I do the dry bark, and then I get the lightest version of the, the main color. And I go underneath, below the big scratches with the yellow and also adding a highlight to the top edges on all these panels with that light yellow. And that kind of suggests more of a gradient, more of a fade than is, than is really there. But it's a good effect. And it, it's like a kind of a last edge highlight. And it really throws a contrast on the dried bark bits. And that is him finished up. I'm super pleased with these guys. Um, I've got the rest of the unit in progress on my desk, but I wanted to finish one up in time for the full release this weekend. And I think they're gonna look really good in my Salamander's army. Like they're gonna look a real standout unit. The sniper guy who comes with a cloak, I'm gonna give him the pattern all over his cloak. And yeah, I think they'll be good. Let me know if you're doing this scheme or anything and um, or how you're painting up your scouts. Because I think you have an opportunity to do them a bit different from the rest of your army if you've got a Space Marine army. And they're going to look great in Kill Team as a little squad. I'll be uh, excited to get a game in with them. So that's my little tutorial on how I did them. I'm going to be doing more painting tutorials like that. Just, just, just doing videos of of how I do things because every time I paint some people someone's like how did you do that and so I need to do I need to do my videos I've got it I've got it down a bit better now I think well, I need to pull more focus uh thanks for putting up with that always thanks for the likes and subscribes and shares and stuff join the discord share your pictures of your scouts love to see them we also should be getting some reveals tomorrow from the Warhammer World birthday thingy interesting just some walk on reveals but it could be anything thanks for tuning in always appreciate it I'll see you next time. Bye.